Welcome to Talk Tennis. Tiffany is joining me today and we're going to talk all about fashion trends for summer. I guess it's already summer. Summer 2022. Well, I think summer 2022 fashion, fashion. definitely. Yes. I think, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're kind of in out. spring, but it's all. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. It's basically, always that way. Yeah. Clay court season. What is everyone going to wear on the clay courts? And two things that I want to talk about first before we get really into it. One, I want to give a shout out to the listeners to let them know that we have this like whole new podcast studio set up. So we're like trying out new things, but it looks amazing. And we're excited about that. So if you are interested in watching the episode, go to our YouTube channel and you can definitely watch. And then second, we were we're just talking about how tennis style is trending off the court and it's like become very popular, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you see the tennis pleated skirt. That's a really popular item. Right? Looks cute on the court yeah. and off the court. I mean, it's a classic. I mean, the, on the court, it's, I think, always in style. It's yeah. just like that look. It's very tennis. Yeah. So for once, tennis players, you know, wear your tennis clothes off the court and you'll be trending and stylish and like the cool kids will be wearing it, too. But let's get into some fashion. We'll start right at the top with Nike, just because I feel like they're always one to talk about. And usually around the French Open, we have some fun stories. So talk to me about Nike. Well, I one to start is I think that especially around Roland Garros, I mean, Paris is a big fashion city. So yes. a lot of brands are paying attention to what uh their athletes are going to be wearing. And then the color of the courts yeah. is really distinct, obviously. And you'll see a lot of color stories and a lot of, it seems like blue okay. historically has been a really color that just pops yeah. on that clay color. And it does look like we will be seeing some blue from and, and the shades of green okay. coming from the Nike athletes. Okay. Yeah. And it's also their, um, this year they've been doing this really cool swoosh. Okay. on their items uh, and they did it in um the australian as well it's i, th I think they're calling it the 50 50 it's okay. the original swoosh and the current swoosh so oh, laid right. on top of each other so you can see kind of how it looks really similar but how it's changed slightly over the years so that's, awesome. that's fun yeah. i love that um i feel like we'll talk about this towards the end but there already are some similarities and other brands that I'm kind of hearing like the blues and the greens um so I'm sure we can probably tie everything together but also I'm wondering does Nike have a big sustainability story yet to their apparel they do um I don't know if it, it's it's like all items but there are definitely items out there that are um they're sustainable and with, they market on um, as 70, at least 75%, okay. they'll call it sustainable when it's at least 75% of their materials are nice. recycled. So, nice. And there are items in the tennis line um, that do have that. Cool. So what can we expect to see on some of the main athletes? I think that what's going to stand out the most, I think, is going to be for the women. Mm -hmm. um, there's some unique cutouts, very fashion. And I think of Parisian fashion. I do think of something that's kind of cutting edge. And I feel like Nike's bringing the cutting edge there. Literally there's some, the yes, edge. the cutting edge. <laughs> there are going to be some cutouts and some asymmetrical sleeve looks going on. So it's going to be definitely out there. And they try to always... It's, it definitely has a very fashion forward look, but mm -hmm. try to keep it functional, like the sleeves, you, really comfortable when you're swinging, you know, no abrasions and that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah range of motion to cram, <laughs> not cram, <laughs> crash, crush that crash. forehand. Yeah. Um, so with the pre-French Open swing, we saw a lot of the ladies wearing the same thing. I know that was a, a very common thing trend that people were like, are they wearing identical things? And it, it was happening. Is that going to happen for the French Open? Um, I mean, there you see a lot of the team, like this, the top athletes get the their own looks and then the team usually share a look. I mm -hmm. think that I've seen um, some of the players as the clay season started to roll out, uh, they are getting new outfits and there are a lot of wearing, are wearing green. And when we saw the Australian and everything is and then the hard courts you saw some the same silhouettes and mixing and matching in colors mm -hmm. and I feel like maybe Nike gave them a bunch of different options because if I look at what maybe it was scheduled mm -hmm. it isn't exactly what they're wearing 
it's kind of fun to watch them. They, they ha- Nike tends to have a top and then or a skirt or a tank or shorts, and they offer it in several different colors. And I've yeah. kind of liked that. Sometimes you do see the players wearing the same outfit, but then other times others saying, "Hey, I'm going to wear this skirt with a." The blue top instead mm-hmm. of the mauve top. I saw that on uh, Radicanu okay, was wearing yeah. the blue with the like kind of that dusty pink. pink. Yeah, yeah, that looked good on everyone. Um, and then are we going to see Osaka wearing her own stuff? Because I think in Australia she kind of did her own thing. Is it going to be available? Do you know? I'm not sure. She, t- she typically, she does get her own line mm-hmm. and she actually has her own separate line that mixes kind of sportswear off court as well as on court and a lot of times at least here for us in the united states is not available at tennis warehouse yeah it's not a retail yeah (laughs) but she has she typically gets her own athlete style so okay cool and then men we have several men that have been trending from Nike and been doing really well. And I know we've seen some sleeveless. What can we expect to see on the men? Well, as far as I know, I mean, I definitely am not 100% sure on this one because they do offer athlete only style sometimes right. that they will be wearing sleeves this time. <laughs> um, but they are in going to be in just checking my notes here. Yeah. Some in blues and like deeper teals and mints and things like that. Yeah, and so what can we expect Rafa to be rocking? He wears his, he has always has a really highly technical top with like the latest sweat wicking material because he works so hard on court. But it's just a color variation of his V-neck top that he's been wearing. Okay. And it's going to be, or should be blue. And then he also was scheduled to wear a green color. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, well, that's exciting. And then shoes will match accordingly, which is always exciting, um, except for possibly Naomi's shoes, which like are so cool, but we don't always get offered them, which is unfortunate. I know they just showed a sneak peek of her new shoes for the French Open. I'm not 100%. I think we actually do get them this time around, but we'll see. So. Yeah, we have gotten them before, but not always. Yet. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, no clay court outsoles with Nike. Not yeah. this year, at least. Maybe next year. We'll see. You never know. <laughs> I think you have to go to Europe. Yeah, they for sure have them. Yeah. So at least that's an option. We, I mean, next time we could just fly to Paris and figure it out. <laughs> but you've been. I have. Oh, yes, I have. I'm, I want to go back. Every I Who doesn't want to go back to Paris or go? I, to yeah, Paris, I've never right? been. So oh, it's the best. Um, and the French is so fun. And that kind of leads me straight into Adidas mm-hmm. and what they're doing. And we talked a little bit about this last week and their inspiration with the greenhouses that surround Roland Garros. Yeah. So uh, when we met with Adidas, they told, talked about them. You've seen them. Yes. Apparently there are greenhouses on the grounds or, or on the outside really nearby. And that's where the graphic inspiration came from uh, on the tops. And um, you had asked about Nike and their sustainability. Adidas is very into that. And they um, this collection is one of their Parlay collections, okay. or sometimes they're called Prime Blue. But the Adidas Parlay, it's made with the Parlay fabric, or at least partly. And that Parlay fabric is using ocean, uh, recycled ocean plastics. Nice. So they're trying to help clean up all the plastics that are in the ocean. I love that. Yeah. I think there's a whole video on that too on our website, which is pretty insightful. Mm -hmm. Um, And then something that I always like to bring up is because I think people get curious about the performance of these materials and they're still, I mean, they're still worn by the top athletes. Right. Yes. So these are, they have a couple different um, technologies and this one is heat ready. So it is breathable. It's kind of textured. And so it just is doesn't stick to the skin. Mm -hmm. And it should be breathable and ventilated and it's quick drying like your top performance pieces. Yeah. I think that the graphics on those are really bold and they stand out. And um, you can see some flowers and you see a sun. So I feel like, yes, it's inspired by the greenhouses, but I can see like the sustainability kind of message coming a bit through the graphics as well. Yeah. yeah. And Adidas is stuff all launched already before right. the French. So that's what we can expect to see the players in for the tournament though as well, right? Right, right. Yeah. They wear, they're wearing it now. So yeah. you've started seeing it as soon as the clay season started, the athlete switched over into that apparel and they are. So that's the same that we should be seeing um, 
at Roland Garros. Nice. I think it's cool. It seems a little polarizing for yeah. some people. The prints are bold, like you mentioned, but they're nice. I think it's in simple black and white as well, makes it stand out even more. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're used to seeing such bright colors in the tennis on the on-court performance pieces. So yeah. seeing just a high the level athletes at the top tournaments wearing this just black and white is kind of, it just stands out. Yeah, it's really visible. Yeah. Yeah, it looks awesome. Um, Let's move right along to ASICS. ASICS is always, to, in my opinion, that like tried and true athletic brand that's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's going to be reliable, but maybe not always like on really uh, trendy fashion side, but more like athletic side. Yeah. I think that in, with some of their print pieces, they're moving into more of the fashion look. Okay. You definitely have the color block I- items, which are very sporty and more along, I think, what you're used to seeing mm-hmm. from ASICS. But we saw a print in Australia and there's a, a s- similar print but in slightly darker colors as we move in. And sometimes I always feel like Roland Garris, you see the players, it's a little chilly on certain days and you'll see they're wearing the three quarters or a long sleeve, Mm -hmm. sometimes some tights if the women are wearing their their capris under their skirts and things like that. So I feel like the colors kind of evoke that too. They're deeper in tone, but there's some um, splashes of like a coral color in there as well. And I noticed that uh, Ego was wearing the new print already out there too, so... Yeah, I was going to say now with Ega, who's like unbeatable going into oh, the yeah. That's exciting. Who are some of the other A6 athletes that we can expect to see? Who are the main ones? Because now Monfils is wearing not A6. No, he wears Artango? Yes. Yeah, or, yes. Or that's his racket. That's his racket, but racket, I think. But it's like, also, yeah. yes, apparel. Mm-hmm. Um, and the. Demon Hour yes. is an ASICS and athlete. Yeah. Well yeah. yeah. Who else on the women's side? I know there's a bunch of them. There are. Uh, Caroline Garcia. I oh, think yes. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. And she's French. Um, yeah. Drawing a blank. I'm like, where's Troy? <laughs> Troy, <know>. Troy is <laughs> like, Troy is definitely my go to when I have athlete questions. Right. Yeah. And full transparency, I wanted to bring Troy in. But as I mentioned, we're still working on this new setup. So. We don't have it set up quite yet to have three people in here. And I was like, well, maybe we could get him remote and pop in. But to be determined, maybe, yeah, for the U.S. (laughs) Open, we'll have it figured out. Because Troy definitely is like, he knows like what year the players like shirt was from, even if it's like on a practice court and like what model shoe and what string setup. So, yeah, he's always our savant when it comes to pro gear um let's transfer into more players that we were just saying like who's going to be wearing it fila um especially on the women's side a lot of their star athletes are no longer in the sport yeah. ash party retired and oh yeah i'm gonna miss her on yeah. court yeah but they're still making the fila seems to be trending and they're still making amazing clothes mm-hmm. so what's their french open look gonna be well you know they're just coming off of the items that there was a collaboration with the designer Christopher Bevins and that was really bright and it was a print and I think we're going to see that going into um, a different print not it's not a collaboration with him but it's another bright print and then shared print between men and women oh, I cool. believe and it's very bright so lots of different colors you have pinks you have greens you have blues so it's really fun yeah. kind of reminds me it's not tie-dye but it has that sort of feel where it's just bringing in a lot of different colors and they but they all live harmoniously okay nice i'm looking forward to that and um riley opelka is a fila wear right athlete. yeah he always rocks the right and you know he always has his own style <laughs> yeah they have a lot of american uh men uh fila yeah. so we have opelka and Mackenzie. yeah uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mackie. yeah yeah yep. um yeah well, Sam Query, yeah. I don't know if he's still, he is playing yeah. here and there. Yeah. And um, Brandon. Uh, Nakashima. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And then we've got Pliskova on the women's side. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I know there's more. There's actually a lot of women wearing fila, it seems like. Shelby. Shelby, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Shelby, of course. Yeah, Was wearing she, fila, too. Yeah. So yeah, they've got a wide group of players. Like, a lot of people are wearing fila out there on the pro circuit now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and they like are totally when I see tennis trending outside of tennis, I feel like Fila is what's trending. Yeah, they're definitely a heritage brand. Um, the big F box. Yes. And yeah, it's definitely 
not just in tennis shops anymore. You no. can find those styles yeah. just about at all the cool where all like, the cool kids are. I don't even know where the I'm cool not, kids shop, but I, someone a couple of years ago said they were selling Fila at Urban Outfitters, and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're really fun. I think, yeah, at Urban Outfitters. That's crazy. But their print is going to be fun. I think there's a, opportunities to mix, like, whatever your favorite color is that's in the print would go back to. Oh, nice. To oh, it. Funny. So it's like off the court, off the pro court and on our own courts, you know, yeah. our clubs and our recreational courts, you can just rock whatever you like. Nice. You know, your favorite colors. Yeah. yeah. And then Translate. we can give a quick plug. I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but they have a new tennis shoe coming out, too, which has been like quiet. No one's really talked about mm-hmm. it yet, but I am excited to see how it performs because it's supposed to be like a top end shoe. And right now they have that axless, too, which is a great wider fitting yeah. shoe. But we'll see how this new one, I'm not going to say the name just in case I'm not supposed to, <laughs> but <laughs> excited for that as well. Um, what about some other brands? I know there's always like the off brands like Hydrogen. They might not have a ton of players, but they always kind of make waves. Um, who else is out there? Sergio Tacchini seems to be trending again. Who LSA or however you pronounce yeah. it. I'm trying to think of some other ones that are on there. I mean, Hydrogen, I know they do have some athletes and we we can see from them. Um, we don't, I have not sure which, what outfits they'll be wearing, but most hydrogen is, you know, very distinctive, yeah. <laughs> very eye catching. And we have some of that currently. And I think we are expecting or hoping to get some more, nice. you know, supply chain issues have been yes. a- across the industry and not just the tennis industry. I think everyone has experienced that across several different avenues of life. So yeah. there are definitely other smaller ones out there. And it's always fun to look. Um, we may not have carry them here, but we have Brooksby wearing, what's it called, Uomo? Yeah, yeah. Uomo. I was going to bring up also Lululemon because now they have Lulu has Layla yeah. and mm-hmm. Jack Sock. Um, also, do we, I think we carry, or at least we do in Europe, Penguin. We carry original Penguin as well. Okay. And so, yeah, they have picked up a couple of athletes. Yeah. So on the men's side. And um, we have Papasil, and on the women's side, I mean, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly. <laughs> this is why we Tom, also need Troy. <laughs> I, I just yes. call her Isla as if we're like friends because yeah. that's, that's all I can pronounce. Yes. Isla, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, we didn't talk about K Swiss, but they're another. They're another brand that's like starting to have more presence on tour. They mm-hmm. they definitely yeah. do with the shoes, but more I've full seen. head to toe. Yeah, I've seen a couple of um, women. I think women only, but um, there might be some guys out there and I just haven't seen them yet. But wearing, yeah, head to toe K-Swiss and they're, we should be getting a new color up, color <laughs> version soon. Because nice. right now it's um, a it's a gray with a peach color. By the time this airs, we might actually have the new colors. Yes, available. fingers yeah. crossed. Yes, I was going to say, we just got a, a few of the shoes in stock. Yes. And, you know, push them out. So. And it really looks good. I mean, I think that it's just a very head to toe, very coordinated look because the outfits were gray and peach and the shoes went to match. And um, yeah, I think that there's a, a tie dye. There is. It's like... Yeah, an orange, I think they call it orange glow and with a blue. It's really pretty. (laughs) Yeah, so that's what's coming and it should be coming soon. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, Are there any, it's hard to like reinvent the wheel sometimes with tennis apparel, but is there anything new that you're seeing trend, like whether it's short length or new accessories or is there anything new out there that people can be on the lookout for? You know, I think what I've noticed is that it's just there's men's shorts have gotten you see like the athletes wearing slightly shorter shorts mm-hmm. in some instances, but there you still see the longer shorts. And I feel like it's just kind of as we were saying earlier, some of the athletes mixing and matching to what they like. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you wear do what, what you, you wear what you like. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um it wasn't that long ago that they approved the the leggings for women right. to wear. Um, on court so you know that that you see that and more women wearing shorts which I really I like to wear shorts as well I wear them quite often most of the time when I'm playing tennis I'm playing with shorts so 
Yeah. Well, and the the vendors right now are making pieces. Like it used to be like, oh, you could wear shorts to practice in, but you would wear a skirt to play in. But the the quality is so nice. You feel just as like nice wearing the nice shorts. Yeah. Some of the Nike shorts have really cute waistbands too. And um, they just, yeah, they're not just for training anymore on the women's side. Mm -hmm. They have some half pockets, but most of them are the built-in shorts, which I'm very used to as Mm -hmm. well. Just for the ball storage. Yeah. Um, Are there any pieces that you have your eye on? I know we always talk like if something's in slow, it's like dangerous because you can just <laughs> go downstairs and pick it and buy it. But if, if it's in Atlanta, it's like, oh, phew, the wallet <laughs> is safe this week. Is there anything you have your eye on right now? Well, um, we talked about it earlier. It was a, It's called the Novelty Tank. Mm-hmm. The, that's the one that we saw a lot of the Nike women athletes wearing. I... Actually, that's one of the pieces that I got to see and touch and feel myself and try on. And the fabric on that one, I love the fabric. The hand feel of that one is great. So I'm really into that one. I don't know. (laughs) I I see so much go through, but that one I really like. And I have been waiting again for some shorts. I just like always, I see them and I want to check them out. And uh, I really like some of those Nike shorts too. Yeah. And we're super spoiled because like just walking down the hall past our apparel buyers, we just see the collections hanging up and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. Or even for me, like some of the crop stuff, I'm like, no, I couldn't pull that off. But it, I'm like, mm, maybe I'll try because it's really cute. Do yeah. Are we going to see more crops or is that I, kind of like awkward? So No, I think, you know, it's the, I don't know if it's like a true crop. It's okay. not a crop where you're going to always see it comes to the top of the waistband. Mm-hmm. I think it goes like that's another trend. And it started a few years ago with a lot of athletes tucking in. Mm-hmm. And so instead of tucking in, there's a lot of shirts that are just coming to the top of the waistband. Okay. And so, yeah, so that seems to be like here for a while. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense because it's not like pulling up as you're serving, but probably would be more comfortable. But you still Yeah, you don't have to t- like tuck in mm-hmm. so you don't have like the fabric the extra fabric around the waist. I like that look with the high yeah. waistband. And then it's like brands like Lucky and Love that do a lot of smocking. They do like a lot of fun things at the waist. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's a good look to have a top that you can like show, show off, off that yeah. part of the skirt. Yeah. yeah. Cause not that long ago, the longer we're kind of, that was kind of the thing. And now it's, they're still here, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like variety. Variety. Yeah. Like. Everyone's kind of making it their own. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Is there anything that we missed that we should talk about? Yeah, there's always stuff to talk about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, what's next? Wimbledon is next. Wim- yeah. I know. Wimbledon's always like super blah boring. It's hard to know. Uh, you know, when you talk about Wimbledon fashion, it's, you know, it's pretty classic there. You The, the rule of how much white has right. to be or how much color you can be on the outfit is pretty minimal. So it's really down to textures or mm-hmm. cut. And so... It's sometimes difficult to see on TV. I'm assuming I don't know that maybe we'll see some of the same silhouettes from the French, just in all white. Um, Sometimes that does happen. And then sometimes they're just designed for the athletes. Sometimes not always available. But I'm trying to think. I feel like I remember hearing that like there was a brand that was going to potentially do something different for Wimbledon. But like it was going to be for the off court look for their athletes. I don't know if I'm making that up. Yeah, I'm not (laughs) sure. I'd have I to might refresh be completely too. making that up, or it could be next year. I don't know. And sometimes there's like they'll make the both, but they'll make the version that is for the courts at Wimbledon, where it's the all white, and then there's versions that are completely done in color too. So right. I mean, yeah. sometimes that is an option where it is the same silhouette. It's just yeah, makes sense. Um, any delivery delays that we already are aware of that we can relay? Any information on? I don't. I know that we have the Adidas Paris is up and it is not currently in stock. I think that a few pieces have gotten here, but yeah. for the most part, we're hoping that they're here in May. Um, and I haven't checked on the others yet. I haven't either. I mean, even just on footwear, but I can assume hopefully that Nike will be in stock. I don't even know. I shouldn't say that out loud. Um, we've obviously had the biggest delays with ASICs, so I can assume that might happen. Um, well, the ASICs Paris apparel, um, a lot of it is here and oh, up nice. on the site for the men and the women. Awesome. Um, the print pieces. So those are here. 
Um, and, and Nike hasn't launched as of the Not recording yet. date. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Not yet. yeah we haven't we haven't gotten there yet as far as launching it on our site yet. But okay. And if you guys are shopping for us, uh, for us, not for us, if you're shopping for new gear and there's something that you have to have and it's not exactly in stock, we would still recommend placing an order just to get your space in line and yeah. ensure that you get it. The second it hits our warehouse, we send it straight out to you. So it's a win-win situation, even though it seems a bit frustrating. I hate shopping and like not knowing it's coming like the next day, but I understand. I also like have to get certain things that I see then and there so <laughs> cool well thanks for joining tiff um anything else to to add in the fashion tennis world <laughs> no i don't think so not right now uh, i'll probably think of something in like 10 minutes <laughs> yeah right that's always. how it always goes <laughs> always it's like oh, i should have said this that and the other um any bold predictions for who you think's gonna win men's or women's or both French Open. Iga? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I know. It's like Iga. If I'm, there's another, it might be bold, but like prediction, but like, I feel like, what if Alcaraz wins? He's I mean, playing. <laughs> so, you know, it's, then you always have to say Rafa. Right. I, I think the odds but, are always in his favor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Alcaraz, yeah. Looking strong. Yeah. They're yeah. both having good lead ups to the French. Yeah, we're only a couple weeks away and hopefully this episode will be ready to go when the tournament starts and that's it. That's all from us. If you guys have any questions about how to get a hold of this stuff, this fashion, this, this apparel, shoes, tennis questions, anything, feel free to reach out, comment on the video, leave us a review or even send us an email at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com. Thank you for joining me, Tiff. Thank you. And more episodes in our fun new podcast setup. Yay. Happy hitting.